so uh, that's the thing that I've been building for a year by now, um, which, uh, like, I've, I've talked to some people about it, and uh, it's, it's a programming language that, well, is in itself uh, programmable with the, uh, with the goal of basically allowing you to do math. Um, so so the, my observation was that... Ceiling lights? Like that? I okay, okay. All right, so, so my observation was that there's a gap between uh, what we do in math and what we can do in proof assistance, um, which is not something that I believe we can fix by just adding features to our proof assistance. So, uh, you will always, every, I, I think everybody who's worked with, with a proof system uh, has had the situation where I have the thing X that is somehow easy to do in math, but somehow very difficult to do um, in the proof assistant. Um, and my, my uh, observation was that many of these things that I personally observed uh, could be fixed if I just uh, could run some code uh, be before um, basically this, uh, b before I, I pass this uh, thing onto the proof system. So basically, if so I can just. <coughs> to rephrase, so if you have like some thing you want to, some, some proposition you want to prove, and then yeah. you kind of massage it, and then it works? Yeah. I, why you have to massage it, we don't understand, right? Yeah, I mean, so for example, um, if you look at some, sometimes you have this thing where. Um, you have to supply uh, a function, an argument to function maybe uh, in the proof assistant, but it's really, it should be obvious what you should uh, put there, but somehow the system can't figure it out. Like most of the, of the times it works, but for, for some very special cases this doesn't work, but you look at it and it's obvious to you that it should be that case. And so what you would like to do maybe is hook up your custom algorithm in there that um, works in these kinds of cases, right? Um, so, so they have these inference algorithms and, and uh, they work in many cases, but sometimes they don't. And the idea is, well, in math, you can, right, you, you as a person, you can learn new things, right? <laughs> and so you can basically in your head, like learn a new inference algorithm that works in a special case very, uh, um, and then you can use it in those cases. And so you can, you can hook these into the system, in your, in your head, in your system. But in these proof assistants, you usually have a fixed inference algorithm that you, you cannot modify or, or interact with without changing the compiler. And then you have the, your new custom system and everybody else doesn't use it. And well, maybe you, you push it, but maybe other people have other requirements, and so it's very difficult. And you would really like to basically have a library that says, well, this is my, my uh, this library defines my new algorithm for, for such a thing, and I just import it at the top of my file, and I can use it in that file, and if somebody else wants to use it, well, they just also do the same import, and then everything's fine. That's that's one of the um, things I would like to do. There are other things, um, but that's just one example. Um, yeah, and so, so I've, I've tried to identify um, what needs to happen um, to be able to do this. And um, there are basically two things that we do. Um, we, we modify our syntax in math, where we say, well, by we, we define some combination of symbols, and by this we mean something else. Um, and then we also get to run basically functions that modify uh, what we do, um, that are like kind of independent of the syntax. That's, that's kind of the, the, the two things. And so that proof system I've built here um, implements those two things. And so, so some example code. Um, so first of all, uh, I can I can write functions. I hope you can someone read them. Uh, so 
you can see this is mostly a lambda calculus, um, and this, this is just a function that defines a, a polymorphic identity. For some reason, there's a, a capital lambda in there. Don't worry about it. Um, it works basically almost the same um, as a small lambda. And then you can see there, there's some, we had this De Bruyne notation. Um, I've, I've been lazy about printing stuff. Um, so internally, we use this De Bruyne notation. Um, but you can really, you can write it like this. Um, but, but for printing purposes, I was just lazy. So, so for now, um, we get terms that look similar, but a bit different. Um, and so, well, that's, that's nice and all, but maybe um, we would like to have a bit of a nicer way um, of, of writing function definitions. And so now I import some code. And now I want to run this definition. So you can see it here. Um, I have now a better syntax for my let definition, where uh, previously I just I define a name and then some term that, that um, I want to call with that name, right? But um, so, so this means that my term usually begins with a couple of lambdas where I bind all these variables and then I use them. And uh, so what I've done here is I decided, well, the lambda is annoying. I, I, I would like um, to, do, to do something like this where I just give you um, a list of parameters where like here I give you a natural number and here I give you a list of natural numbers and then um, I tell you, oh, no, this is the, the should be a list of natural numbers. Um, and now I don't uh, need to use the lambdas anymore. I can just uh, uh, write um, a definition for that function. Um, ignore that gamma there. It does nothing. Um, it's just, uh, maybe, maybe I should, uh, I should say, maybe I should say what it does. Um, so if you look at this, um, well, this is supposed to mean I, um, I call the cons function with three arguments. For some reason, I have this question mark here. Um, that's also technical and corresponds to the, the big lambda we had previously, but you can ignore it. Um, but so, what happens with this definition now is you can see that um, for some reason this expands to this very much longer definition, right? Where I say, well, now I have two lambdas um, and I have, uh, I have here this application um, of this cons. And you can see that actually under the hood, I can only apply a lambda or a, a, a function to a single argument. So I only have uh, built in syntax for uh, uh, applying to single arguments where these uh, angle brackets uh, correspond to the to the big lambda and the square brackets correspond to the to the regular lambda um, and so this uh, this gamma notation that I use here um, for this multi application somehow desugars into what I've written here so so previously um, before I've, I've done this uh, import you had to write it like this. But now I've imported some stuff and now I can write this with a nice uh, or a nicer syntax um, to, to do that. Uh, the reason I have to use a, a gamma here is something kind of annoying technical about parsing and so on. You, you wouldn't want to know it. Uh, but we can, um, at, at some later point, um, we can get rid of that also. Uh, not in this talk, but, but um, at some later point. All right, so now we can, we can uh, give a bit of a better, um, we, we can write our definitions nicer. Now I have this, this import, which um, takes a bit longer to do because, well, thing is slow. And also you can see it does a bunch of stuff. Um, um, so it's printing, like you, you see here always this define, right? I always define a function. And basically whenever I, I define anything, it prints me back what I just defined. And well, I defined define a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, so now I have this um, string syntax available, which maybe, yeah, maybe you can see like this. So. 
Now I have this, this classic string syntax. Um, and well, when I run it, you can see that it desugars into this huge mess. Um, the reason is, well, uh, what's a string? Well, it's a list of, of uh, 32 bit integers, maybe. So um, I, I don't have any bits available or anything. I need to lambda encode everything. And so that's how I represent 32 bit integers with this long, long list of stuff. Um, but, it's, but it does what it's supposed to do. Um, and the other syntax uh, I've defined here is a list syntax, where now I can tell you, well, I can just uh, uh, write this convenient list notation. Um, so that's also been defined by the previous one. Here that I, at the beginning of the list, I need to give you the type um, of, of what it's supposed to do, and that's because I have no inference at all. Um, so like in Haskell or something, if you write a list, you look at the elements and then you can figure out, well, okay, uh, this list is supposed to be of type list of integers or whatever. Um, we don't have that here. I, I, need to, um, I need to give you it manually. And as you can see, again, it's a huge, huge bunch of stuff that you wouldn't want to write yourself. Um, all right. And so this is a short, short interlude. Um, the, the type theory I'm using here while consistent, also um, uh, has untyped uh, lambda calculus as, as its subsystem. So it can actually write um, non-terminating uh, uh, um, computations. Um, and so what I've done here is basically um, with, with uh, this import now, um, I've defined a, a, a syntax for this internal untyped lambda calculus. Um, and so uh, what I do now is, well, I can, I have now this syntax where in fact uh, I, I just put a little lambda. I don't know if anybody, everybody can see it, but I put a little lambda there and now it knows, okay, this is supposed to be like an untimed lambda term um, and it wraps the thing in, in, well, what it needs. So I can do things such as define the Y combinator, which is, uh, the thing in Lambda Calculus which uh, you use to uh, do things like arbitrary recursion. Um, all right, and we can also do natural numbers. That's, uh, natural numbers is actually the thing that I wanted to do. Um, so I, I kind of, for myself, I, I decided um, it would be a good benchmark for my system um, if I could have a natural number, a notation for natural numbers without having it built in. Um, so if you look at uh, systems like Koch and Acta, um, uh, they, they define natural numbers as this algebraic data type, or like, uh, yeah, um, yes, as an algebraic data type, but then um, they need to have a built-in notation for natural numbers, uh, which somehow knows that, well, if I were to define uh, a natural numbers data type, then please, uh, if you read this, uh, this string of, of uh, digits, then please interpret that, is, uh, interpret that uh, in that way. And that's something I didn't want to do. Um, and so, again, for some reason, I need some weird prefixes here. Um, again, that's something that uh, can be got rid of at some later point. Um, but yeah, I, I can do that. And then you can see, well, uh, it desugars, actually, uh, maybe uh, something easier. So if I, if I do just one, it desugars as um, basically a, a list of digits. So this is a list that contains the digit one, and then I apply to it, uh, convert this list to a natural number. Um, yes, and so, so the last thing um, that I've been doing, um, I think that that's also a bit longer again. Um, so, so now we have a bunch of notations and I think uh, it's, it's kind of uh, believable that we can extrapolate to get 
basically uh, uh, any notation that um, that languages use, usually do. Um, but what we can also do is um, within my, my proof system, I can call out to my uh, system shell, for example, and I can actually use this, the, the result um, of the shell call to, to do things. I can use it to define terms, for example. Um, and this doesn't break uh, consistency because it's happening in a monad. And so um, it can define something. So you, you can define, um, you can basically take some file that contains a proof of something. You can parse the proof and uh, then you can ch uh, type check the proof. And if it type checks, then you can define it uh, within the system itself um, without breaking your uh, consistency. Um, well, at least that's what I want to do someday. Um, I can also uh, write some stuff, and so this is the, um, the, the thing where now we can basically uh, do something and, and get a result. So, uh, so, so if you have a binary uh, one zero multiplied with anything, it's just a left shift. So, so yeah, we can, we can multiply numbers. So basically, I have built a very fancy calculator. Um, and of course, uh, if I have a list, I can also compute it length, its length. At some point, I would probably do decimals, but uh, yeah, for now, I've only built binary. But decimal is like, if I have t 10 minutes and I'm very bored, I will probably do it. Yes, um, and so, uh, this is more or less where it's currently at. Um, some things that I want to do with this is um, the implement. Yes. Is it actually print in the right thing, but it's cut off on the left? Yeah, it's cut off on the yeah, left. It's it's oh, yeah, it's cut off on the left. Can you move the window? Uh, I don't know. I, I can. Um, it's it's full screen here. Oh, you mean? Uh, Oh, that's annoying. Um, I, I think I can rotate it somehow. Uh, yes, now it's here. Yeah. So again, this is binary because I, I haven't done decimal yet, but, but decimal is like a, yeah, just an exercise basically for, uh, for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so what I want to do with this is, um, so uh, this of course is also a programming language. And so you see I can, I can call uh, out to the system shell and so what I can also do is I can write files. So one thing um, is I can actually uh, use it to compile those functions I wrote. Um, I, I'm, I'm not 100% uh, sure yet uh, to what the easiest example is probably to just take some, some random Lisp and, and run it from there. Um, so, um, but then, uh, because this is a very, very small implementation, um, this is like 3,000 lines of ACTA code uh, for, for the whole proof system, um, it's actually reasonable to, to think that it can implement it uh, in itself, right? Um, and then we get some, some interesting things we can do because uh, we can, we can um, well, reason about from in itself about itself. Um, for example, the, the proof that this uh, theory is consistent is not very difficult. Um, and so we can act actually uh, have a proof assistant um, that, well, while the outside layer uh, is maybe trusted because it's not a very very large system. The inside lecture, uh, the inside layer, we can actually verify um, and and be sure that we cannot prove anything false on the inside. Well, as long as we trust the outside. But yeah, that's you. You always have to start trusting somewhere. Um, one thing, one one other thing that we can do is um, we've seen in in Alex's talk, right? We can 
uh, have all these uh, funny uh, logic systems um, that we can build. And um, in, in Alex's talk, we always had this, uh, this notation where you had to write your lambdas like lam and then var, and you have this very verbose nota notation. Um, and with this, with this meta system here, you can actually um, do the same thing. You, you define these logics, but then you, um, you write a, a notation that works, that looks like um, what I've done here, basically, <laughs> and um, write these uh, terms in your internal logic without any syntactic overhead. So you could, for example, write something like um, some, some internal uh, theory in a category, maybe, and just uh, have some nice syntax um, to, to, to come with it. Um, or for example, you can, you can imagine doing some homotopy type theory as like, I don't know, cubicle uh, type theory, for example, um, with some nice notation, and you can have it all in the same system. Um, and I think that's a, that's a huge benefit because um, you have all these different logic systems, but they are all disconnected and, and lying around somewhere in the world, but um, many of the things that people do um, just uh, uh, are very similar, right? You, you, you want for your, uh, for your niche logic system that you designed, I don't know, in an afternoon or something, you want some nice syntax maybe and some nice functions and so on and so on. And um, with this system, you can, you can just put it inside um, and then uh, you, you have, well, if there is code for it available, um, which there's a bit, but not very much right now, um, you can basically say, well, let's try to import this, uh, this, this code that we have um, from, from uh, other Metacidil stuff and just run it um, inside our system and, and see what happens. So, so you get, uh, basically to do, you, you basically get a bunch of free stuff um, without doing much um, by, by implementing it in that new logic. That's, that's kind of where I want to take it. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. So, questions? Yeah, so I'll turn maybe on one quick question. And yeah. So it's called CDL, the underlying type theory. Okay, oh, right, of course it's CDL, yeah, never mind. No, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fancy type theory that's very small, um, but somehow... I forgot for a second this was made as a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like distracted by... Yeah. There are maybe I yeah so Lisp was Lisp was one of my inspirations um, for for this whole thing. Um, I don't think I know ACL. Um, yeah, so, so um, the, the, the core idea was here that there should be, um, the, the, the type system um, should be basically everywhere. You don't want to have like a separate system for, for your proofs and for your metaprogramming. And that's something that I haven't really found anywhere else. Like, um, Agda does something like this, and I think Agda does metaprogramming very, 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 very well, but um, uh, it's also lacking some of those features um, that I have here. Um, there, are, there are also some other proof assistants that uh, try to do something lispy. Um, one of them is called Typer, um, but yeah, it's, I have always, uh, I, I have looked at these systems, but always, they, they always didn't make me really happy. They, they yeah, they, they never feel like um, 
they never feel like they uh, basically, uh, they, they always feel like at some point they made, made just a compromise. Um, and yeah, that basically like I, I wanted no compromises at all. Um, and so like any syntax you've seen here, nothing is, is built in, in into the system. Um, like that's technically a small lie because I, I need to like have an initial syntax somehow to start the thing up, um, which is sort of built in, but not really because uh, they, the, the, the things that live in there are, well, they're still just regular terms in language. Right? They're all things that you could define yourself if you wanted to, but you just need some way, of course, at the beginning. But yeah, uh, you, can, you can absolutely throw everything away, do everything yourself. Uh huh. I, I just like the fact that this system doesn't know the comment syntax. <laughs> you define the comment syntax. So from the beginning of yeah. the file until you define the comment syntax, you yes, cannot write comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I haven't shown. I can, I can uh, show that. Uh, oh no. Let's let's do this. Uh, oh, where is it? Test. Uh, yeah, so so this file defines a comment syntax, and if you, huh? Can you make that x one? Uh, yeah, sure. Oops. It's very difficult to read if you don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> but um, yeah, this file defines a comment syntax. And if you try to do a, a comment before that, well, you will get a, a syntax error. And uh, I think I think I have. Uh, so as soon as you define comments, you should just immediately go to a massive multi-page long comment explaining everything you've done up to that point and the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this file is imported like at the very beginning, so Let's so so th there is not much um, not much that you're missing. But but yeah, the the Oops. The comment system is then is this kind of thing, of course, like just a Haskell thing. But actually, uh, this line at the bottom here uh, basically enables um, this comment syntax. So where the comment is right now, it would also uh, give a give a compiler error or like a type checking error, or whatever. And after this line, you can write comments. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 